Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.1 demo for the piece I call The Keeper. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw me posting these a few weeks ago. Um, well, everyone in my family got sick like over the same period of time, but one particular night, uh, my youngest was sick with like throwing up so I was like well I'm gonna have to stay up all night with him and I don't want to fall asleep and he needs me etc etc so I just pulled an all-nighter sitting next to him on the couch while he slept uh, which was actually I mean I was really bummed out for my kid but I was it was actually kind of fun I just sort of sat and watched Seinfeld and worked on this what you're seeing right here so that was the premise behind this I all the way up until some point which I'll try to say it was all done in one night and I was kind of posting this as I went along so this piece has a very very specific sort of uh, evening an encapsulation of time for me when I look back on the replay of this uh, you can see here I started by having her be way more sinister in the beginning uh, than sort of how she ends up uh, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Again, this was probably at like midnight. I just decided to start drawing and uh, this was the idea, but then I changed it. Here's where I change it now. I go for a much more calm approach uh, for the character. I wanted her to be a little bit more just at ease, maybe a little more like you don't exactly know what she's thinking or processing. Uh, and that was the overall premise for this. Now you can see that she's in this pose. Uh, I actually didn't know what I wanted to do with the hand. At first it was just like a gesture of sorts, and then I was like, okay, well, I'll put something on it. So eventually the, the bird gets added on there. Uh, because I was live, live posting this, you could say, I wanted to get it to a place where I had something like a, almost like a color key. So it's a really rough line with just flats, and that was just to try and show as I was posting it what uh, where I wanted to take the whole thing. And then I didn't finish it in that night. Uh, I eventually got too tired and I was a little distracted throughout the process. So I ended up finding time a couple days later to finally wrap it. So this piece is all done in one sitting up until a certain point, and then it sort of gets delayed a few days, and then the rest of it gets wrapped up. So it was done in like two sittings. Now, as for the design, uh, I didn't have a lot in mind at first, but I would say about this point where you see the sort of tiara on her head and then you see like her expression and then I add this little uh, cardinal that has these horns, I start thinking, okay, I'm going gothic with this. So the idea there was black, put in some metal pyramids all across it. Uh, that could be fun. Um, so some of this is exploratory. You can see here I go and just tighten up where the, her rough body is going to be because I don't have like a costume design yet. And then when I started actually working on this, I googled some various gothic things just for inspiration. I don't believe there's any part of her that is purely taken from any type of uh, fashion accessory. It was more just like looking at the types of fashion accessories and going from there. You can see that I use aspects that are kind of armory, but it's not really armor. It's just layers of uh, like leather, uh, patent leather or just regular leather, uh, trying to trying to communicate maybe what the world is that she comes from in some sort of a way. Um, I wish I could say that there was lots of thought into her backstory, but there was almost zero thought into her backstory. It was more of a an exploration on the fashion of something that might be like this gothic inspired pseudo bondage gear that she's wearing the story being told or the story that's sort of implied is just simply her her appearance and what you might take from that and then the fact that she's got this like potentially demonic or just horned little cardinal and then i wanted to make sure that there was some sort of color uh, language between her and the cardinal that's why ultimately her eyes are red and then that's like the end of her story I mean she's got pointy ears so you could say like she's an elf or she's a vampire or she's whatever the hell you want her to be that has pointy ears um, but that's that's like as far as I went with it so um, 
having a I, I if I was pressured to I could totally come up with some sort of a backstory but really it was just about this one illustration and and the fact that it was you know super late at night I was just trying to capture something that felt interesting there's also some things in this that I don't normally get a chance to paint I almost never paint birds I almost never paint just like all dark leather uh, and some of the characters that I did for a village corrupted, they might be wearing that, but it's all done. That's all done with flats, so there's not a lot of rendering going on there. And that's that's sort of it. That's the idea behind this. Here's a bit of a quick hair adjustment. I go. I decided to go with more of this frizzy thing because I felt that the clean hair was just, felt too obvious. And then I just quickly doodle in some sort of a tiara-looking thing. And now here, I felt like this was a good time to just jump into flats so that I could start seeing if this was all working uh, with itself. It was for the purposes of posting it and just updating people on my progress, but it also, it all, of course, is super valuable in, in the artistic process of trying to figure out what you're going to do with the piece. So I knew from the get-go that I, also, I wanted her to be in this ethereal, sort of just gray, foggy environment. I thought that would go well with her being mostly dark. So there's not, again, much thought going into that. And then I just put the shadow across it to test it. Now that flew by super fast. Uh, we're going to come back to it at the very end. I'll show you the difference between the final and the color key. So now this is when, at this point, I've duplicated my file and I've started merging everything so that I just basically have the flat reference and then I'm going through and doing what will be my true flats for the render. That's why the line work is so low in opacity now because I want the lines in order to guide me but I need the piece to be able to stand alone. So the uh, so they need, to be, they need to be there enough that they're guiding me but they need to be out of the way so that I can see how the paints are just going to look. There was just a quick eye adjustment there. So all of my decision making uh, for the pieces is essentially done uh, from a design point of view. I know what she looks like, I know what her costuming looks like, I know what the bird looks like, and I've made all of these general decisions. Now once the thing has been flatted, all of my focus goes towards capturing the materials as well as I can. Uh, on this piece uh, I used an array of brushes. I'm not going to go through which brushes because even though people ask me all the time I really am against recommending specific brushes used for specific things. I'd rather have people try to just try brushes out and see what happens with them because it's ultimately that level of experimentation that's going to get your brain thinking less about, oh, I use this brush to do this thing, and more about, oh, I have a thing to do. What Creatively, what tools can I use to try and capture that? And that might mean that you're gonna have experimentation and you're going to have times where you don't have the exact brush that you need, uh, but meaning like just right at your fingertips. But I think that that's a better muscle to work over time than just having like a collection of brushes that like one brush is named like hair. I think it's fine to have the brush that's labeled hair, but maybe there's more creative ways that you can do hair and thinking about it more like that is uh, I think at least more beneficial. So here I just use the symmetry tool real quick to do the tiara and then place it with the warp tool and now it's just crudely placed in there right now for the flat purposes. And now I've moved into actually rendering the skin. Now, I did this a little bit differently than I've done other things. In fact, if you go to my various media and you see the Viking that I not that long ago painted, I actually did it in a very similar way. On the Viking, I color picked for all of his armor and his uh, hair and all that, but for his skin, I used a series of multiply layers, and that's exactly what I did here. Uh, instead of color picking all of the skin colors, I just used multiplies with like a warm, a light 
warm gray set to multiply and I use that because since I wanted her skin to be so pale it would allow me to adjust the opacities of those and it impact uh, her uh, skin more easily. Now my layer breakdowns for this, if you follow other videos, you know that I usually keep this sort of face or head separate from the body if in fact there's skin on both. And that's absolutely the case here. The layer stack is like her body skin and then her black outfit, then the pyramids, then like her head skin, kind of. I think somewhere in there there's also the hair. I have like a layer of hair in the back and then a layer of hair in the front and stuff like that. But uh, that'll just show you why that there was two applications of the blush and multiple applications of just certain things like that. That's why like her face got all painted first and then her body. Uh, the other thing too is that allows me to do like a, a test pass on something like the face while I then go... Uh, so then I have like a road map when I get to the to this, the body in this case. Now, while you're sort of watching this get painted, uh, let me just explain the overall strategy for painting her and sort of what I was thinking going into it. I already mentioned the thing about the skin and then that I was going to color pick other aspects. Um, but you can also see that in this case, her skin has a slight rim light on the underside of like her jawline. And then there's a rim light on her hand already. And usually I save those types of touches for the end. But the way that I wanted this to be on this particular piece was I was going to be more considerate about the rim lights and how they were going to play against different surfaces. Now that doesn't mean that uh, I like nailed it or anything, but from the exercise that I was trying to just do for fun basically, um, that's that's how I decided to do it. So within the layer stacks for the skin, there is a rim light one. Within the layer stacks for the leather, there is a rim light one. Uh, also a big mistake at least as far as process goes and something that would have saved me a lot of headaches that I would have redone if I was going to do this over again is the her big leather sleeve that covers her arm that's here in the foreground is not on a separate layer and I totally would have done that now in retrospect but I was trying to keep my layer count down because all of the then extra work that I had to do to control the black that was going into that sleeve was just a pain in the ass and if it were separate I could have selected it out or painted underneath it or done a bunch of shit like that. Uh, you will also see eventually the values on her outfit will get darker. I decide at one point that I'm not pushing the just the darkness of that enough and I uh, bring it down a little bit in value. Here I'm also looking at some reference online as to how a material like this might look when it picks up shine. I don't do it so much on the shadow stuff because the shadow stuff is a little bit more standard, uh, but then when it gets to the shine, I wanted to look up some reference on how to do it. So then the uh, going back to my comments about the strategy, all of those individual folders that have all these components, they're going to have their own rim layer. Uh, rim light layer but then there's going to be a lot of atmosphere stuff and color correction stuff that's going to then be added at the end of all of it as well as you'll see when I'm in the various folders and, and sometimes I'm done with them and I come back to them and other times I'm, I just do it in real time there'll also be some additional bouncer reflection that I will add in for instance where her right bicep is you know she's got this bright white skin that would then bounce off of the leather on her right breast so that we would get some sort of a play with the reflection there and so things like that 
I uh, go back in and add or sometimes remember to do it on the fly. Sometimes I don't do it on like in the middle of doing it, not because I have forgotten about it, but because I'd rather do it all in like one big stage and things get grouped as far as the process goes that way. Here you can see some of the buckle work. I don't zoom in too tight here because uh, the recording when you're in portrait uh, for 1080p or whatever this is, 1080p I think, uh, just isn't super high quality so it would just distort out like crazy. But you can see the detail if you look at the uh, final posting online.
Here you can start seeing where I experiment with lighting and how I'm going to handle the material of the leather. Uh, I decided to put some fairly hard shine on the lip so that the lip looks, looks kind of glossy, but you'll see that I ultimately decide to not make the leather glossy and to go with like a slightly duller uh, type of leather. I just thought that it looked nicer and that um, trying to get all the reflections right and then making them like bright and shiny, I just, for whatever reason, I, was, I decided that that wasn't the way for this. Um, and I decided to go with like just making it softer overall. So right there you can see that's sort of now my benchmark for how the uh, the reflectiveness of this material is going to be. You can also see that the leather is now also a lot darker. And now I basically go through and just identify all the areas where the light is going to catch in a certain way and I try to give it that dull shine going across it. And now at this point we start getting into some more environmental uh, reflections and rim lights, trying to get some of that light that's around her bouncing off of the outer edge of her. Uh, this is also where you'll see me in a second after I sort of go around and do all of this outer rim lighting and, and rim lighting on the sleeve, you'll see me go in and put that bounce I was talking about from her right bicep to her right breast. Uh, and that's just one example, it's like the allowed example. Uh, or I should say just like a really clear example compared to uh, other areas where I may do something similar to that. And there you go right there, there's the, the reflection now. There are other opportunities for that across the piece and you can spot them uh, when you go looking through it. So now I'm on to painting the hair. I decided to use one of the brushes that's like an old brush or old dry brush or maybe it's even called like an old oriental brush or something. I can't remember what the name of it is. Uh, but that's how I decided to paint the hair to give it some texture and just change it up from the feel of everything else. Here you can also start to see that the way those layers are broken up, her bangs and then her sort of like right sideburn or like hair tassel or whatever, as well as the hair on the whole basic right side of her head, her right, not our right, is all a layer. And then the distant hair that's on the distant side of her skull from where we are is all on a different layer. So that's how I'm painting it at this point.
because I had done the pyramids really late at night, uh, this is when I'm sitting down doing another pass at them and I'm just sort of cleaning up some of the lighting and making sure that it's a little more accurate and even just cleaning up the simply the application of it and making sure that it's all a little bit cleaner than it was before. You can see here I'm on the arm now adjusting the way that it's picking up the black from the uh, armor I guess you could call it and then even the skin from the underside of her left breast is reflecting off of that pyramid there so it's really me just going through and making sure that I'm trying to be as consistent as possible with all of these things through a really quick metal texture on it as well At this point, it's a lot of little tweaks that I'm going through and making sure are sound. And now we are working on the bird. So just going through and using one of the messier brushes that I thought would work really nicely with trying to do sort of a stylized feather. Uh, this is all done with various layers now where I'm Lay, laying them in and then erasing away to try and create some depth um, to the actual feathers themselves. Uh, the cardinal is obviously very stylized, but I'm looking at cardinal ref while I'm doing this so that I can make sure that I'm trying to, so that I can make sure I'm getting it as accurate as I want it to be. And then you'll see towards the end here, after we've done all these feathers, that's almost like doing just sort of like its, its local vibe. And then I go through with a uh, and do like a darkening around the whole outside of it. Oh yeah, and of course some saturation, desaturation on the wings. And then I do like a darkening around the whole thing to give it extra depth around the edges and then add in like its rim lights. And you'll see that that's sort of the point where it really comes together. Uh, the bird in particular really comes together. There's a lot of little noodly stuff in all this that's probably hard to make out, but hopefully you can see some of it. Here's the darkening pass I was talking about to give it some extra depth. This is just with a multiply, uh, like a light brown, very light brown. And then there's the rim light that's applied using just sampling the colors in the background. Now we're just wrapping up some of the elements with the tiara. The tiara was left mostly flat because at the end I was going to put that all in shadows anyways if you remember from the color key where I had the shadows going across her. It ends up getting very very dark up there which I'm fine with because all the attention is supposed to be sort of across the top third anyways or the I don't know what to call that. <laughs> Here we go with the shadow layer. Now this is just a, a bluish desaturated blue multiply then I add in that uh, extra bloominess that's in there with the subsurface scattering I mean now I had forgotten that I had like this little skull sort of barrette little like clip thing in there so I go back in and add that this is the point where things get super noodly and I'm sort of putting it down and dealing with something in the house and then coming back and looking at it again. Uh, so you can start of seeing a lot of these extra little uh, tweaks going in. Uh, I duplicate the whole form and blur it in black in the background just to add a little bit of AO. Um, and uh, 
I mean, there's just sort of a lot of little things here. I feel like my, the, me explaining my process is completely breaking down at this point because uh, the way that it all gets captured, there's just lots of little things happening. Value adjustments, uh, little tweaks, little painterly things. You'll see the layers turn on and off because I'm like, oh shit, I should tweak that. And then I go back and tweak it. At this point, by the way, I believe the file has been duplicated like nine times uh, in order for me to get around the layer limit. So that's just another thing to quickly point out. This is a version of the file where numerous things have been flattened. Uh, so now what I do is I decide to give it a little bit of this texture across the whole thing. So I use one of the shitty brushes. I mean that, I don't mean that like the brush is made shittily. I mean like the point of it is that it's really hard to deal with. Uh, so I duplicate the whole thing and then I use that as like a smear and I go through and I smudge the whole thing. Uh, in various ways that I thought was aesthetically pleasing and then adjust those opacities so that it gives it like a interesting painted but kind of damaged feel. And that's going to be it. That's going to phase into the final version here at the very end and uh, you can check out what that looks like. Uh, this was really fun and it was really interesting to like work on it like all night and then do it a little bit later. Here's what the original color key looked like. And then here again is the final version, so you can check it out. So there are some things in here that were experimental and new, and some other things that were sort of tried and true, my usual process. But ultimately it was really fun, and I got to figure out a couple of new tricks that I'll probably use again in the future. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification button. I would really appreciate it. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.